Hey everybody. So it is late. I am home. I'm not gonna divulge too much information about my whereabouts today because um I don't want people to know where I was. <laughs> but I will tell you this much. I'm not going to jail. Um, it's been a good day. Can't wait for school tomorrow. If it's not canceled, because apparently it's supposed to snow a lot. Um... I'm really hoping, like, with this being, like, my first year away from Longwood, I'm hoping I can stay reconnected, uh, stop, not stay reconnected, stay connected and reconnect with, um, my homies in Farmville. So, and my homies who left Farmville. Cause not everybody stayed. Like a lot of people, like transfer out along with. So, that's what Facebook is for. We'll see. Um. I guess since I don't have much to say, I should come. I should come up with some sort of life lesson for today. It is the tenth day of the first month in 2011, and your life lesson today. Is be persistent. Be patient and persistent. And you can get anything you want. I guess to put it in religious terms for those of you who believe in that. I mean I don't knock it. It's just not exactly my cup of tea. Um, they always say. God may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. My secular version of that is, you know, the universe is on its own, is on its own clock, but it provides for you as you need. Till next time. Peace and love. I've never been quite arrogant enough to swear it does or does not exist. But some days I really believe in God. Today in particular isn't one of those days. In fact, most days I just live with the assumption that there might be a God. And that if there is one, it's a God that doesn't interfere much with our everyday lives. But there are those occasions where I feel compelled to pray. But I never pray for myself, oddly enough. Yeah, I may toss out, I, oh, Jesus, help me here and there, out of frustration, but that's, that's more of a learned habit, like nail-biting or something, when you're nervous. No, but when I, when I truly pray and mean it, and really want something to come of it, it's always for others. For fear of pain in others, for fear of loss of others. I don't like to see others suffer. And 
I don't enjoy knowing that there's nothing I can do about the suffering of others. And that helplessness, that that inability to to make things better, that's what drives me to prayer. I think that's kind of disgusting. You know, I've I've gone to church. I've gone to multiple churches. And I sit in the I sit in the pew, and I listen. And I I kneel when I'm told to kneel. I close my eyes and I pray when I'm told to pray. I recite every word they tell me to recite. And I wait to feel, to feel what I, I assume everyone else in the room is feeling. You know, that knowing, that that rapture, as they call it. The arms of the Lord. I just, I just wait for it to hold me and take me and swoop me up and make me feel like everything is right with the universe. Because in the end, there's a plan. In the end, you know, there's more than nothingness and... Then we open our eyes. And if you look around the room in that moment, try it. Try it sometime. Go to a church, and just after everyone has prayed, steal a peek around the room. Some people will be smiling. Some people will just have a blank sort of content look on their face. But they all have this glimmer in their eyes. This glimmer that says I know there's a place for me. I know I'm doing something right. I know God. And they just seem so at peace. These are people, you could burn down their house, kill their entire family, and take literally everything from them. And they may ask questions. They may say, why God, why? They may ask God, why me? But at the end of the day, I would say 99% of these people, and that's a modest estimate, 99% of these people would maintain their faith after losing everything. As a follower of of science, I I think that's absurd. Blind faith, blind, blind faith is one of the scariest and yet most beautiful things ever given to mankind. To us, it's believing in what you can't see. To them, it's believing when you can't see. It's that 
that's that step, that ledge out in front of you. That hand that guides you that says you're going to be alright. I'm here for you. I don't have it. I've looked for it. The Episcopals, the Presbyterians, the Baptists, heck, the Muslims, the Jews, Hindus. You take any world history class, you're going to learn of half a dozen religions at least. I've learned my fair share. And I always paid close attention in the religion sections because I, I, I wanted to learn. I wanted to believe something. At the end of the day, none of it really made sense. Well, no. I take that back. It's not that it didn't make sense to me. It made perfect sense. But it didn't ring true to me. I didn't feel it down in my soul. It didn't, to put it in Christian terms, it didn't give me that Holy Ghost. But I'm man enough to say that maybe they're right. I'm a man of science. I question everything. I, I mean, we we all believe in the Big Bang and dark matter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we all, in, in science, we always ask where things came from. So I ask, where did the Big Bang come from? And if God put it there, then where the hell did he come from? You keep asking these questions and eventually something had to become from nothing. That doesn't settle with anybody. I think the most precious thing man ever gave himself was religion. He gave answers. As a young man who lost his religion long ago, I don't have those answers. I just have my camera at 2 o'clock in the morning.